this is the animation that you get when you're using a diffusion model such as this. Note that on each step, some of the actual tokens that we got are being replaced by the diffusion algorithms. What a time to be alive. Apple have released a open coding model that is a fine tune of a Chinese open model. Hey everyone, my name is Vinalin and in this video we're going to have a look at Diffue Coder. This is a model specifically trained for coding capabilities and it is released by Apple. And the more important thing about this model is that it is actually a diffusion model. We're going to have a look at what the model is, how does it perform on different benchmarks, and I'm going to load it into a Google Quad notebook and show you how you can run the model and how you can test it for yourself. Let's get started. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. There you can find a complete AI engineering bootcamp that starts from Python and machine learning basics. Then it goes over what LMs are and how you can use them. Then you're going to learn about Arax, CAX, agents and how you can build your own agentic workflows. Also, you're going to get access to complete eight projects on GitHub. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. This is the paper that Apple have released along with the code and weights for the model. And here you can see that they have trained a 7 billion parameter diffusion large language model on 130 billion tokens of code. Within the paper, there are also benchmarks comparing the Diffucoder 7 billion parameter model to Gemini Diffusion, Dream and Wada. And as you can see, the benchmarks are quite favorable towards Diffucoder. Of course, using this model in practice might be a completely different thing. The instruct version of the model along with the base checkpoint are available on Hugging Face. And as you can see here, within the instruct version, they have further trained the base checkpoint with a open coder SFT dataset for additional five epochs. Here on the right, you can see the hierarchy of the fine tunes. The base model is actually Quen 2.5 7 billion parameter model. Then they took Quen 2.5 coder model. On top of that, they have trained the Diffu coder 7 billion parameter base model. This is the final model that we're going to be using, which is going to be the fine-tuned or instruct version of this model. I have a Google Club notebook that is running with an NVIDIA L4 GPU. This has roughly 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And as you can see here for the resources images that I have added, when this model is loaded, it takes a roughly 17 gigabytes of VRAM. So keep that in mind. I'm going to install the latest versions of the Transformers, Torch, Torch Vision and Rich libraries. So after that, you can see that I have some animation code here. And after I have run it, you can go through the animation code on your own when you download the notebook. Uh, you can see that I'm going to be adding the Diffucoder 7B instruct and I'm going to be loading both the model and the tokenizer from the model ID. So this is going to go ahead and download the model itself along with the tokenizer. And when you go through the configuration of the tokenizer, you see something that is probably a bug that the ending token or end of sequence token for both for the generation config and the model config are set to end of text. Here I'm going to be using this visualization token states along with this hook that I'm going to show you why we're going to be using this when we're doing the generation. And in my first example, I wanted to test the model on something very simple. So I have this prompt write a recursive Python function that calculates the end Fibonacci number. And as you can see that I'm applying the chat template here on the model using the tokenizer. And you can see here that I have the input IDs and I have decoded the tokenizer. So you can see here that the tokens for end of a sequence are actually IM end. So compare this to the 
end of text. So here you can see that we have a relatively standard prompt with the system and the user. I won't quit the I'm start and I'm end for each turn within the prompt. And here you can see that we have a default URL helpful assistant system prompt, write a recursive function. This is my prompt. I'm not really sure if this model is fine tuned or trained with the idea of having a different system prompt. After that, I'm going to be creating our first generation. So I'm going to be putting the input IDs and the attention mask to the CUDA device since we're going to be doing the inference there. And as you can see, for this generation in particular, we are actually using just about two seconds of time to generate the response, uh, which is quite a lot for maximum new tokens of 64. And the number of steps that our diffusion model is going to be performing is just 16. Of course, those models are probably not that well optimized within the Hugging Face library yet. And probably there are some other techniques that I will to do a bit faster inference. But in this case, and this is the result that I got. Uh, probably you should keep in mind that I have also did this on a first try. So this is the first inference. These are the parameters that I'm using. I'm going to be wanting the 16 steps, the maximum new tokens, a temperature, top P for the generation and then the algorithm for the generation of the diffusion is going to be entropy with a temperature of zero. These are taken, I believe, from the original dream library, which this code is based on. And after that, you can see that I get uh, 17 states for the visualization token states. So I have 16 steps. So the initial state is just the zero state. And then we have 16 more on top of the first one. And as you can see here, I have the shape of each of the visualization token states. And each of those is actually 94 tokens. So I had maximum new tokens of 64, but you need to add actually the system prompt and the user prompt along with the additional tokens. So uh, this roughly makes sense. For the tokens themselves, I'm going to be decoding them into uh, using the tokenizer. And here is a list of the decoded tokens that we're going to be using. And this is the animation that you get when you're using a diffusion model such as this. Note that on each step, some of the actual tokens that we got are being replaced by the diffusion algorithms. And by default, all tokens are actually a mask token. So in this case, the model have generated using the diffusion, the result, which is this function here is a Python function that calculates the end Fibonacci number using recursion. Then we have the markdown and this is the output from the model. As you can see here, we have the Fibonacci recursive function that is within this markdown. And uh, this appears to be working quite well. So note that we have the 17 visualization token states that I have shown you within the animation. So when you run this through the tokenizer decode, you can get the decoded answer along with a nice formatting using the rich library. So here you can get just the output by taking uh, the input token length out of the result. And then I have skip special tokens. So this will not include the special tokens of the tokenizer. And this is the very nicely formatted result. Also here, I'm testing out the function just to make sure that everything works as expected. And the 10th Fibonacci number, at least uh, as I have checked, is indeed 55. So from here, I'm going to be using this generate response function, which essentially encapsulates all of the inference steps. This is going to just take a single prompt and then a maximum new tokens and steps, which are going to be 5, 12, as a default and note that I will also have this print response function, which essentially uses the rich library to print out the markdown.
for the first more realistic test of this model, I'm going to be using this prompt, write a Python function, find most frequent, that takes a list of items, which can be numbers or streaks. The function should return the item that appears most frequently in the list. If there is a tie for the most frequent item, return any of the items that are tied. If the input list is empty, the function should return none. So this is a lead code type of prompt or function that this model needs to generate. I note that this took roughly four and a half minutes to generate. Of course, this is not very practical. And it might be the case that a few more steps are needed to solve this problem. But in my case, this is the steps that I have used. So here is the response. And note that it is actually giving us this find most frequent function. Uh, it says if there are not items, so if the list is empty, uh, we're going to get a none. And then it is using the counter from the standard library in Python, along with the max count and most common. So uh, also it is giving us a list of test cases for the function itself, which is quite good. So this is the function itself, and I just added a bit of test cases you can go through them on your own within the notebook those were testing some of the edge cases within this function and as you can see this is actually passing all of the tests within this function at least those that i have created so i would say this is quite interesting for 7 billion parameter model but of course quen 2.5 coder model is quite strong as well so for the next one i have a bit more specific requirement you're given a list of dictionaries where each dictionary represents a product for example products and a list of products write a python function get available product name so here i'm also specifying uh, the function name that takes this list and returns a new list containing only the names of the products that are in a stock the returned list of names must be sorted alphabetically. The implementation must use a list comprehension. So in this case, I'm also guiding a little bit the model on how the implementation should be done. Note that this took roughly 2 minutes and 10 seconds, a lot faster. I'm not really sure what is the case for that. Uh, probably the output itself was a bit uh, smaller. So here is a Python function that solves the problem. And as you can see, the function itself is quite short. And I like that it actually used the Python comprehension within here. And it has also used the sorted function, which is built in, in Python. And here it gave us a explanation of why this is happening and the check of if this product is actually in stock. I have taken this function again. Those test cases were written by Gemini 2.5 Pro. It appears that all of the tests have passed. Uh, so again, this appears to be quite good, at least on these types of tasks. And even with some of the edge cases that Gemini 2.5 Pro have generated for this model. So this is it for this video. We've seen the Diffucoder 7B Instruct model from Apple, which is a fine tune of Quen 2.5 color. So in this case, both things that are happening is that Apple are releasing an open model and this open model is actually a diffusion model, which is quite interesting. We've seen the model in practice and so that those types of model are easily runnable within the Hugging Face Transformers library. Also, we've tested the model on a couple of prompts and it appears that the model is quite slow, but in the future, it might be the case that those types of models are performing faster and faster. We are about to see if those types of models are, are going to be actually replacing the LOMs models that we're using today. But in any case, this appears to be very interesting. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Also, if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro, where you can get a complete AI engineering bootcamp. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.